You are now unmuted. Call. You are now muted. Wednesday, April 8, 2020, meeting of the Lowell Conservation Commission. We're meeting this evening by conference call uh, due to the inability to meet in person. Uh, and uh, the agenda indicated how you could uh, access the conference call as well as watch LTC Channel 99 as usual. Uh, we have a, uh, a, a full uh, complement of commissioners here tonight, and they'll each be uh, 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 introducing themselves before they speak so that we can keep track of who's saying what. Uh, our order of business starts with a continued business notice of intent uh, presented by Norse Environmental Services for Paul Mercier. Uh, the DEP number is 206-796, and the project location is 51 and 57 Shirley Avenue. Uh, this particular uh, notice of intent uh, has, uh, we have uh, requested and they have requested a continuance until our May 13th meeting. So uh, if I could have a, uh, a motion to continue on that, um, please. Excuse me, Louisa, sorry. Yep. Could we yes. first take the um, the vote regarding the signatory oh, authority? I'm so, I'm so sorry, yeah. No. Nope. Sure. This, is, this is Brad Butenheis. I'd like to make a motion to grant Eric Slagle signatory authority for the Conservation Commission to persist until meetings can be held in person again. Uh, Motion to make. Second is by. This is Kate Bedron. Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Uh, roll call. Aye. Uh, Bill Lovely, aye. Wesson Standish, aye. Kate Bedron. Brad Perry Downs, aye. Can we set an order uh, to be established for each roll call? We're going to use Lovely, Standish, Beadron, Downs, Butenheis, and perhaps, Barnum. Uh, perhaps Fran could uh, call the names. Yeah, Fran, can you call the names? Yes, I can call the names. Okay, let's start that roll call again then, please. Okay. Um, Chairwoman Varnum. Aye. Commissioner Lovely. Aye. Commissioner Biedrin. Aye. Commissioner Butenhuis. Aye. Commissioner Downs. Aye. You missed one. Thank you. <laughs> That's uh, uh passes unanimously. Conference recording um, has started. Okay, we uh, if the recording is just starting, uh, we are we did just take a vote for uh, granting Eric Slagel from the DPD uh, uh, permission to uh, sign for uh, for uh, votes that the commission uh, takes at this particular meeting, um, and that passed unanimously. So returning to our agenda, we have uh, continued business, the notice of intent for DEP number 207-0796, which location is 5157 Shirley. This is a request for a continuance until our May 13th meeting. Uh, may I have a, a motion to that effect? This is uh, Commissioner Downs. Uh, I motion to uh, move that to the next meeting. To the second is by. Second is by. Second. And all those in favor? Uh, so that would be a roll call. Uh, so, uh, Chair Chairwoman Varnum. Yes. Commissioner Lovely. Commissioner Lovely, are you there? Sorry, I'm here. Yes, aye. Commissioner Bedren. Aye. Commissioner Butenheis. Aye. Commissioner Downs. Aye. Thank you. You may continue to the May 13th meeting. 
Our next order uh, of business is an enforcement order that has been outstanding at 211 Plain Street. Uh, it, it involved tree removal along River Meadow Brook without a permit. Uh, the applicant has been uh, working on this for some time and the winter time intervened. Uh, we have received a uh, request for a continuance on this one as well. So could I have a uh, motion to continue, please? This is Commissioner Bedron. I make a motion to continue. Seconded by? This is Commissioner Lovely. I'll second that. Uh, okay, could uh, could we have a, uh, a roll call vote, please? Chairwoman Varnum? Yes. Commissioner Lovely? Yes. Commissioner Bedron? Yes. Commissioner Butenheis? Yes. Commissioner Downs? Yes. Okay, and then let's see, continue to the next meeting. Uh, uh, our, uh, this is West. This is Weston here. I'm just wondering, um, should, should I be on that roll call as well, or not? Uh, not at this time. Oh, oh, definitely. I'm so sorry that. <laughs> oh, sorry, Weston. No, it's okay. I know. No, it's all right. <laughs> I totally understand. <laughs> um, okay, we got to get you your name on that list. <laughs> Yes, I just added it, so sorry. No problem, no problem. Okay, new business now. Uh, first, a request for determination of applicability by the City of Lowell. The project location is 501 and 611 Pawtucket Street, and the City of Lowell has filed uh, for installation of outdoor fitness equipment at Sheehy Park within the 100-foot buffer of the Merrimack River. Uh, we got quite a bit of information on this. It's a, a station type of a thing, uh, no moving parts, where there are approximately 10 stations where different uh, fitness activities can take place. It's set along a, the pathway that runs parallel to the river. It's on the, uh, the inside of the pathway and it appears to be something that could be quite popular uh, as as far as that goes, uh, it's, it's stationary, and the only moving parts appear to be mulch, which may be uh, replenished on a yearly basis underneath each structure. So uh, I, I didn't see any particular uh, problems with uh, approving this. It is applicable. However, uh, it's not going to uh, affect the the resource. Could I have a motion of some sort on this, please? Um, excuse me? Yes. So we do have uh, Giovanni here to present that application. She joined oh, the call. Oh, I'm so, so. sorry. I'm, I'm it's so okay. sorry. No it's worries, hard, everybody. It's, it's hard working sight on scene here. <laughs> yeah, it's awkward. sorry. It's so awkward. It's such an awkward format. But Giovanni is here, I believe. Okay, yeah. Giovanni, let's, let's have a little more detail then about this. It's something Great. new, I think, to the city of Lowell. It is, yeah. So thanks so much for um, accommodating me on this new sort of call system we have. Um, so the the plan that we have in place now, it's um, actually a partnership that um, we've been doing, uh, the planning department in partnership with the health department, parks department, and the Greater Lowell Community Health Foundation. Um, <clears throat> we were able to, we were fortunate enough to um, apply for uh, grant funding through the Blue Cross Blue Shield Foundation um, and were successful. Uh, they were focused on, you know, awarding funds um, to help uh, communities improve access to, you know, fitness and health. Um, and so we thought uh, that this would be a neat opportunity to introduce some uh, free access to the community for fitness equipment. Um, we wanted to uh, target it in communities that had, um, in neighborhoods that had higher levels of um, obesity and asthma um, for health purposes, and also we're trying to uh, find locations that we felt would be um, visible so that people would, you know, see it and be able to use it. Um, and so we thought that the Sheehy Park uh, was a nice location because it's already utilized as a walking path for many people. Um, 
and we felt that we would be able to install it in a way that would not detract from um, people's view and the walking path. We were very specific on the color selections that we made, um, keeping them kind of uh, greens and browns just so um, it kind of just blends in and doesn't sort of um, stand out like playground equipment. Um, and so, you know, we're hoping that we'll be able to install this and that um, people will be able to use it uh, free of charge. And um, we were thoughtful in picking equipment that we felt like would be uh, able to stand up, not just to, you know, winter and stuff outdoors, but be able to stand up to use. Um, and so we tried to limit the amount of sort of moving pieces and that kind of thing. Um, so these things will have a long lifetime. Thank you. That, that's uh, kind of an exciting concept that uh, we look forward to. I'm thinking that a lot of the uh, university students probably walk through there and would be very likely candidates to use that equipment. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, did anyone have any questions uh, concerning this particular uh, request? Anyone from the board? Is there anyone uh, calling in from outside that would like to speak on this particular issue? Okay, I think at this point then we're ready for uh, a motion on the determination of applicability. So this is Commissioner Lovely and I'd like to offer a motion uh, to issue a negative three determination for this project. Negative three means it's uh, within our jurisdiction. However, it won't affect the resource. Uh, is there a second on that motion? Butin has second. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Uh, Butin has second. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, no further discussion. We'll have a roll call vote. Chairwoman Barnum. Uh, yes. Commissioner Lovely? Aye. Commissioner Biedren? Yes. Commissioner Butenheis? Yes. Commissioner Down? Yes. And Commissioner Standish? Aye. Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. And uh, good luck with your project. When will this start to be installed? Um, so as soon as we get, um, so now that we have your approval, we also need to go in front of the Board of Parks, which we're doing at the end of this month, and then we'll be ordering equipment and hopefully we'll have it up before the summer. Okay, wonderful. Good luck with your project. Thank Great. you. Great. Thank coming. you all so much. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye now. Bye now. Next, we have a request for a certificate of compliance. Uh, the location is 94 Lafayette Street. Uh, the filer is Donna Robinson, uh, and the order of conditions was issued in uh, September 5th, 2007, DEP number 206-618, and this was for the construction of a single family home within the 100 year flood, flood zone. Uh, we had a bit of discussion, uh, since this is an area that uh, has quite a bit of flooding at times and, and suffered greatly in 2006 and 2007. So we wanted to ensure that, uh, you know, uh, things were put in place that would uh, enhance any, uh, any uh, susceptibility to that kind of flooding in the future. Is there anyone here to present this project? <clears throat> Hello, is Donna here? Hello, is this Donna? Yes, it is. Hello, welcome to the meeting. Uh, your your house is complete, and I did uh, drive by there. Um, we did require uh, that you had a foundation that was uh, a flow through type, and we also requested uh, shrubs and things along the property line, if I recall. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about, about that construction? What is it you'd like to know? 
I'm her husband. I'm I'm the one that built the house. Okay, so uh, what were what were the types of flood proofing of the foundation that you incorporated? We um, put in uh, five smart vents, uh, two in the front of the garage doors, two in the back of the garage foundation, uh, one in the side of the, uh, if you're facing the house, the right side of the house, into the basement, and also a flow-through vent in the rear into the existing basement also. Okay, and uh, these these vents would only uh, come into play if there were a, a, a flood event, right? They're, they're, otherwise, the the, the uh, cellar would be basically a tight cellar. Yes. Uh huh. Okay, and, and I did recall some talk about. I'm sorry. The other uh, request at the time in 2007 was to scope out the land on the right side of the home going to the back garage to allow water to flow around the house, which we did that also. Okay. And I did see a row of shrubs there, which I think we suggested might be a good idea to kind of hold mm -hmm. hold some of the soil along that property line. Yes. Okay. Uh, anyone from the commission have questions? All right. Um, do we have a motion on this particular request for a certificate of compliance? This is Kate Bidron. I'll make a motion uh, to authorize the certificate of compliance. Okay, motion made to uh, to issue the certificate of compliance. Is there a second? Butenheis, second. Okay, uh, do we have any further uh, discussion of this particular request? Okay, may you have a roll call vote then, please? Chairwoman Varnum? Yes. Commissioner Lovely? Yes. Commissioner Bedrin? Yes. Commissioner Butenheis? Yes. Commissioner Down? Yes. And Commissioner Standish? Yes. Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. And uh, that certificate will be coming out to you as, uh, as soon as the office can get it to you. Uh, thank you for coming in. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Next on our agenda, we have a request for a determination of applicability uh, sent by Linda Caporali of 293 Wentworth Ave. Uh, she requested uh, to remove eight dead or diseased trees within the 100-foot buffer of the wetlands in her backyard. This was considered an emergency situation since some of the trees had already uh, shed some limbs, which hit a, a neighbor's uh, garage structure. And uh, the office was working with uh, Ms. Caporali to uh, give this emergency certification so that the trees could be removed. Um, I understand that they have been removed. Is is anyone here for this project? Uh, yes. Okay. Can can you uh, can you tell us the situation out there at the present time? All right. Um, currently, excuse me. We have, yes. Sorry. Could you please state your name? Just so we have it for uh, the Zoe, record. Uh, Zoe Bellio. Thank you. Are, are you a uh, are you a, the owner of the property? No. Uh, uh, I'm the owner of the property. I'm here with her. Zoe resides here. Okay. And um, okay. she's been back and forth a lot more just with with the um, committee. So she's just been handling okay, it. Okay. Good. Okay. I just wanted to know who we're speaking to. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so we are uh, we are um, our home is a budding wetland, uh, and there were eight dead and what appeared to be starting to disease trees in the buffer zone outside of those wetlands. And when there was a storm, we had some of one of the tree fall in our neighbor's garage. 
so we wanted to start getting them taken down, so we submitted the RDA. As things started getting delayed, we did contact uh, your commission, and we had someone come out here to issue an emergency certification to get the trees cut down. Um, they've since been cut down, but the stumps remain, as are the root systems, and all of the debris was removed. There are also uh, two remaining trees and 20 uh, small fruit trees that were planted within the past couple of years. Did you say 20? Uh, yes, there were uh, 20, uh, 10 on each side that appear to have been planted by the person who previously lived here. Okay, all right. I was uh, going to ask if it might be appropriate or you might be interested in, in replanting some new trees to take the place of the old ones, but it sounds like perhaps your property is uh, getting pretty shady as it is with, with 20 trees on each side or 10 on each side. Yeah, they're currently, they're currently very young. I think they're, they're, they're only like four or five feet tall. Um, uh, and you know we're trying we're trying our best to take care of them, keep them going well. But they do they border uh, the uh, entire side for the length of either side of the backyard. So that's the buffer zone back there. Okay, I guess I'll uh, I'll defer to the other commissioners to uh, find out if if there's an interest in in replanting at least a couple trees to take the place of the ones that were lost. It looks like uh, they may have been maples. We saw some pictures. Um, the ones that were removed might have been maples, which maybe are too big a tree for that particular area. Um, um, yes, yeah, some two two were very large, and then a couple were in clusters and were much smaller. Um, and I do believe mm -hmm. we had two different types of trees uh, was what the um, services had told us, but I, I'm not certain on those types. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, if they were Norway maples, they're invasive as anyway. So, um, so does anyone from the commission have questions or comments on this particular uh, project? Okay, so the work has been done. Uh, we do have a request of determination, uh, which I think we should follow through with as far as uh, approving or or not, and uh, then we have the emergency certification, which we should ratify. So we have a couple of votes to go here. Uh, first, if we can uh, have a motion on the determination of applicability for this particular site. Uh, Butenheis, I'd like to make a motion to issue a negative three determination for uh, this project. Okay, negative three, motion made, uh, seconded by? Uh, lovely, we'll second it. Okay, uh, any further discussion? If not, we'll have a roll call vote, please. Chairwoman Varnum? Yes. Commissioner Lovely? Yes. Commissioner Bedrin? Yes. Commissioner Butenheis? Yes. Commissioner Down? Yes. Commissioner Standish. Yes. Okay, motion passes unanimously. So the uh, work was considered applicable to the act. Uh, we now have the emergency certification, uh, which was sent out by the office, and we're going to ratify that. Uh, if I could have a motion, please. This is Commissioner Bedron. I'll make a motion to ratify. The emergency cert. Motion made, seconded by. Uh, Commissioner Lovely will second. All those in favor, roll call. Chairwoman Varnum? Yes. Commissioner Lovely? Yes. Commissioner Bedrin? Yes. Commissioner Butenheis? Yes. Commissioner Down? Yes. Commissioner Standish? Yes. Okay. Uh, motion passes. Uh, and the work has been done, and uh, we had no further discussion as far as replanting any trees. Certainly, uh, 
if you're inclined to uh, plant some trees back there, the commission would have no uh, no objection to that. Uh, it is considered a bird sanctuary going back a number of years, so birds like trees, and if you find some that you want to plant back there, that's certainly not anything that is going to be against the uh, the act. Do you, do you have any more questions? Thank you. Excuse me? I said wonderful. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you for coming in, and I'm glad it, things went well for you as far as the removal. Yep, we appreciate your consideration. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Bye now. Well, next, we have an enforcement <laughs> order. Uh, the land is owned by the Roman Catholic Arch Archbishop of Boston. It's a cemetery, Holy Trinity Cemetery, located at 117 Boston Road. Uh, the enforcement order was issued uh, for earth moving and storage of tree trunks and mulch within the 100-foot buffer of the wetlands without permission from the Conservation Commission. Is someone speaking? Uh, Fran, is there someone that we're trying to get on the line here? Uh, yes. Is Mike DeRosa there? I am here. Hi, Fran. Hello. And I think Deacon Steve and uh, Father Nick Sinella is also going to be on the call. But I can start if you want. They are... Here, I believe, as well, their number is dialed in. Deacon Steve, are you here? Hello. Hello. He okay, good. And Father, what is the <laughs> name of the Father? Father Nick Sanella. Nick, okay. Okay, um, I, I don't, uh, we saw pictures of this particular uh, area. And I also visited it uh, personally yesterday. Uh, I'm very concerned about this particular uh, location. Uh, it's one of probably the worst wetlands violations that I've seen in many, many years that I've been on the commission. Uh, we, we sent out the, emergent, uh, the enforcement order on March 3rd, and it appeared to me that there had been recent activity at the site even though the emergency enforcement order had requested that no work be continued at that particular site. I saw fresh mulch uh, being spread around. I saw branches that appeared to be freshly cut, uh, dumped over the edge. I did see that there was uh, what looked like a wetland uh, delineation marking along one of the uh, edges of the wetland. And perhaps you can just tell, uh, uh, perhaps Mr. DeRosa can just tell me what's going on out there. Certainly. Um, for the record, Mike DeRosa, DeRosa Environmental. Um, just by way of introduction, because we haven't been in front of uh, the Lowell Conservation Commission for a while, is um, uh, I started Rose Environmental back in, in 1994, so we've been in business for 25, 26 years now working with the Wetlands Protection Act. We do a lot of work with wetland restoration, uh, mitigation, um, invasive species management, and uh, ecological restoration generally. Um, we've worked as consultants for the Archdiocese of Boston since 1986. Um, and have worked through a lot of environmental issues uh, with Chancery and with the Archdiocese of Boston over those years. Um, I agree with your assessment, uh, Ms. Chair. The, um, the work that I observed um, on my site visit, and I was the one who delineated the wetland uh, the wetland boundary as well. I'm a professional wetland scientist and also a licensed site professional, so we do brownfields work as well as wetlands work. But um, uh, there's a fair amount of fill. Uh, if you've noticed, there's uh, everything's been sort of covered up with, with fresh bark chips. Um, but the trees there and the edge of the fill 
is, um, you know, between 10, 12 uh, feet deep. Um, there's a fair amount of logs. Apparently, I was talking to Fran yesterday, and there were uh, cars and debris that have, have been cleaned up. I think that's been a step in the right direction for certain. Um, but there's a ways to go here, uh, certainly. The, the most uh, disconcerting piece to me is that, um, one, we don't know what's in the fill. We're assuming it's mostly bark chips and, and vegetation, and, and it looked like there was some concrete and asphalt there as well. Um, but that's going to have to be removed. Um, the majority of the of the fill appears to be off the cemetery's property and onto the city property. That needs to be verified by a survey, which was outlined in the enforcement order as well. Uh, so there's, and then we have to come up with a restoration plan to put that that land uh, back to where it was, excavate it down, screen out the material, sort it, dispose of it appropriately. Um, I'm hoping a lot of it can be composted with the other material that's on site uh, that's in a, a much more appropriate place for for stockpiling there in the front part of the property. So there's there's a fair amount of work to put this right. I think to start, um, we have gotten prices from a surveyor that we work with, uh, Morin Cameron Group. They have an office in Haverhill. Um, and we are urging the um, the parish to hire them to do the land survey, the topography, and and basically uh, put an existing conditions plan together in the area of the activity. We'll take that plan and we will uh, put together a restoration plan. Um, we're getting costs from different contractors um, to do that work. Um, Obviously, we'll come to the commission first as part of the enforcement order, review the plan with you all, um, explain what we're doing, why we're doing it, um, and how, it's, how it will be uh, put into place and how the interests of the act will be protected while it's ongoing. Um, but we're gonna need some time to do that, get all that planning and, and work together. So we're, we're hoping to continue this matter um, possibly to your second meeting in May or first meeting in June um, to give us the surveyors are back about two weeks and then we'll need a couple weeks to put something together, um, review it with the with the parish, get, get pricing and cost to make sure that it's all affordable. And then come to the commission with a with a, a thought out plan, a well thought out plan that will that will meet the objectives of the enforcement order. So that's our plan. The the parish is 100% behind um, what we're proposing, and um, and understand that that work needs to be done, and they are willing and able to to undertake that and uh, and make it happen. Okay. I I one you know one of my major concerns was the fact that it seemed that work is continuing out there. Can we agree that uh you know no no new material should be placed within that hundred foot buffer? No, I'm certain that Deacon Steve has talked to the contractor there and everything there's been a cease and desist on the property, so there there should not be any more activity going on out there absolutely mhm. Mm so, uh, you know, like you say, it is a, a, a very a large problem and uh, it's going to take, you know, some time to, to rectify it. Uh, we do ask when we issue an enforcement order that, that, that the, uh, the owner uh, uh, submit a restoration plan. And I would be interested in, in, in that, keeping in mind that, uh, you know, we want to have uh, that hundred foot buffer restored, and like you say, there is perhaps a ten or fifteen foot depth of material there that is directly on the edge of the wetland, as it was marked by uh, by you, apparently. Right, um, I marked it, and it's the edge of fill, so the wetland may actually 
proceed up into that fill area. So we will identify that when we remove the material mm -hmm. from the from the area. We we do seem to have some earlier uh, maps available uh, that the the uh, office sent out of uh, of the of the wetland uh, demarcation from uh, I don't know whether it was Google Maps or some other. Pay too much attention to that, but uh, that would be. I think one thing I think it was do. from yeah I think it was from the Mass GIS Oliver um, website. Okay. Which is close. It's 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 close, but it's in the everything has to be done in the field. It's a good indicator, but not a not an absolute mm -hmm. by any means. Right. Okay. So uh, you know, I I can understand the complexity of, of a restoration plan in this particular case, but I I do also see an urgency to it. Uh, in that that's a, a as well as being a, a, an incredibly large uh, amount of fill, it also looks to be fairly unstable, and I, I would be worried about, uh, you know, a safety issue out there as well. Understood. Mm -hmm. We could, uh, yeah, I think it won't, I, I think the work will be undertaken this spring, uh, hope as soon, if we do it under the enforcement order, if, if uh, after you see the plan, you can, you can vote to approve that plan, we could start the next day. So. It would be quick. Mm -hmm. um, like I say, we just need time to get get everything put together in a way that's that's going to make sense to do that. I don't want to just go out and start, you know, bring an excavator out there and start pulling things back without any without any plan in mind or any any rhyme or reason, you know. Right. Uh, do we have any questions or comments from the commissioners? Um, this is uh, Commissioner Lovely, and I, I just wanted to um, confirm kind of what uh, Chairwoman Vaughn was saying with respect to the current stability, recognizing it's going to take time to kind of come up with a comprehensive plan, but in the interim, in your opinion, is, is the site stable? The site is, the fill material appears to be a mix of things. Um, it's it's a, probably about a a two and a half to three percent, uh, or a two and a half to three to one per, or a slope on the on the uh, wetland side. It's um, mostly veg, veg, vegetation. Um, there's some shrubs that have been cut and and thrown over the edge. There's some gravel. There's some you know, and it's all covered with bark chips. So the bark chips alone will help stabilize it and keep any rain from eroding anything. Um, so I, I think we're okay, and especially since the you know the parish is willing and able to do the work this as soon as we get the approval from the commission. I don't think that's going to be much more than a month, month and a half out. So okay, I, I think it's fine for for the short term. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Uh, any other comments or questions from the commissioners? Is there something that we can do in the meantime? Uh, go ahead, Kate. So this is Commissioner Bijan. So if I get this straight, we're going to ratify the enforcement order tonight, and there's going to be you guys are going to come back in May at some point with a plan. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Butenheis, um, is there something that can be done in the meantime to protect the wetlands from any unstable fill that's been placed here? I think the placement of the there's a thick layer of bark chips that are on that now on that fill area. I th I think that's suitable right now to stabilize that uh, for the short term. <laughs> any rain will be the energy from any rain uh will be dissipated by the bark chips it'll help infiltrate the water down through the pile and i think i think the wetland will be fine i don't see any this, any adverse impact there is this a situation that you would certify where you're not the client of the 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 uh for the uh, short term short short term stability yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah. I don't see a problem with leaving it there until we start the work, which be a couple months out, month and a half, couple months out. I think it's fine till then. 
Can I request the name of the contractor involved in this project? We're getting prices now, so we haven't selected one, but there are, there are two or three. I know the parish has a couple they're looking at, and we, we're asking one of our guys to build a bid on it. So we're going to compare those prices, um, but we'll be in touch with certainly with Fran when we when we select a contractor. Understood. I don't know, Deacon. Do, do you know Do you know the um, the person you're thinking of using? Well, I just I, was I just got a call. I got a call today from the people who are working at Westlawn, and they're interested in working uh, on that project. Okay. On our project. Yeah. Yeah, and the guys we're working with or, or getting a price from are the guys that work with uh, Roman Catholic cemeteries. So they they work around cemeteries all the time, and they they know what they're doing in in these areas. So. But it'll be somebody reputable. And we I was can asking specifically uh, about the contractor that's you know, been on the site previously. It won't be him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so we'll be. Uh, you'll keep in touch with the office, and uh, they'll share any updates over the next uh, few weeks with uh, with the commissioners. Uh, yes. I, I would. I would kind of stress the urgency of this. I know uh, it's not that easy to get contractors in the peak season sometimes, and and I, I would stress that uh, this is important uh, to get taken care of in, in, as soon as possible. Uh, yeah, the parish will make this a priority for sure. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, we'll be looking to uh, be kept informed the steps along the way, the results of your survey and topography and and uh, what you recommend as a restoration plan. Uh, I in particular would be looking for, uh, you know, uh, material be, being taken out of the 100 foot buffer to that wetland and uh, any uh, stabilization that might be needed. Uh, I did notice that it, there appears to be a uh, a violation by uh, a neighbor of the same uh, in the same location, but uh, without knowing where the property lines are, I can't say whether uh, you know whose property that occurred on. Right, the so survey that, will not, definitely pick those yeah. property lines up. Yeah. Right. So uh, that's something that I kind of like the office to be kept informed on as well. Okay, uh, do we have a motion to uh, ratify this enforcement order at this point? This is Commissioner B. Drawn. I'll make a motion to ratify the enforcement order. Do you have a second? Buten has second. Motion made and seconded to ratify the enforcement order for the 117 Boston Road property. Uh, is there any further discussion? If not, we'll have a roll call vote, please. Chairwoman Varnum? Yes. Commissioner Lovely? Yes. Commissioner Beedren? Yes. Commissioner Butenheis? Yes. Commissioner Downs? Yes. Commissioner Standish? Yes. Okay, thank you everyone for uh, for joining us and uh, explaining the situation out there. And we'll look forward to hearing from you in the next uh, few weeks about the restoration plan. Thank you, uh, Ms. Chair. Could I ask um, when the meeting, the second, do you meet twice a month? Uh, we do the second and fourth Wednesdays. So our next meeting is uh, the 22nd, I believe, of um, of, uh, of what would be the, the second April. meeting in May and the and the first meeting in June? I believe it's May 13th. Is that correct, Fran? The second meeting is the 27th. The 27th. I am, I'm going to pull up the schedule. Yeah. Should we continue this to a date certain or? Yes. Yeah. So I'll pull up the... Uh, 
could continue to the first meeting in June. I think that would be yeah. give us ample time to get this done. If you, okay. this is Newton Highs, we, we did, you have you have yeah. the opportunity to um, continue to May 27th, and then if you are absolutely not prepared at that moment, uh, a, a week ahead of time, you can let us know, and we can push you to the next meeting. I'd like that's to get fine. this done as soon as that's, possible. I understand. That's 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 agreeable to us. May 27th. Um, okay. Madam Please. Chair. Madam Chair. Yes. Deacon Papik here. I would like to reiterate Mr. Uh, Michael's uh, comments that, that the parish and the diocese is totally committed to getting this site cleaned up as soon as possible, and we will work with you 100% in, in, in cooperation uh, to that means. Okay. Well, thank you for saying that. I know you have a, a beautiful cemetery there, and I was very surprised to see the disarray at the rear of it that's occurred. Um, right. You know, it's a lovely cemetery. I, I wanted to have some time to walk around and look for names that I recognize, but uh, I didn't get the chance. Well, uh, it will be back to its original state yes, as soon as we can manage it to get it done. Thank you for saying that, and I, uh, I appreciate your commitment to that. You're welcome. So thank you for coming in, and uh, we'll uh, we'll be hearing uh, from you. Uh, hopefully, some information before the meeting of the 27th, so that we can, uh, you know, see what what uh, track you're on and and how you're progressing. Right. We'll we'll endeavor to have a restoration plan to you a week before the 27th, if we can. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, good night now. Good night. Good night. Uh, next on our agenda, we have an emergency certification uh, for a location at 10 Holt Circle, which is in Pawtucketville. Uh, this was to allow a small breach in the existing beaver dam to allow water to flow. Apparently, some of the homes in that neighborhood were uh, experiencing flooding in their basements. Um, uh, Fran, has this work uh, been accomplished that you know of? Yes, it has. Okay, is there anyone here to uh, to speak to this or would you like to tell us a little bit of what, what happened? Um, all, the extent of my knowledge is pretty much in the, the summary. Jared worked more closely with this one, um, but like like the summary says, um, homes were experiencing flooding and the DPW requested that we sign the emergency certification to allow a small breach in the dam to allow water to flow through and uh, reduce the flooding. Okay. So, um... So this was a one time and I believe the uh, expiration of the emergency certification was in late March. So uh, this was a one time thing. If, uh, if there's any further trouble, there would be a new emergency certification, I presume. Correct. Okay. So uh, do we need to ratify this one? I guess we should. Uh, could I have a motion to ratify this particular emergency certification, please? Newton Highs, I'll make a motion to ratify the emergency certification at 10 Holt Circle. Thank you. Mr. Is there a second? I'll second. Oh, All those in favor, roll call. Uh, Chairwoman Varnum. Yes. Commissioner Lovely. Yes. Commissioner Bedrin. Yep. Commissioner Bootenheis. Yes. Commissioner Downs. Yes. Commissioner Standish. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I've reached the end of uh, what I see as the agenda, unless there's some minutes. Is there any other business, Fran, that we should be aware of? Uh, yes, the minutes for the February 26th meeting. Okay, that seems like quite a while ago. Uh, those were sent out shortly after the meeting, if I recall. 
Uh, is there anyone that needs more time to look over those minutes? I know I didn't get a chance to look at them, but well, yes. would somebody like to make a motion? Yeah, this is Commissioner Lovell. Just for reference, Jared sent them out on February 27th, you know, for reference. Um, I see no harm in waiting to give folks more time to review if need be. Okay. So can we postpone the uh, the approval of those minutes until our next meeting on uh, April 22nd, I believe? Sure. Okay. All right, is there any other business that anyone would like to bring up? Hearing none, uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Newton Highs, motion to adjourn. Seconded by? Adrian, second. Down, second. All those in favor, non roll call vote? Aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you, everyone.